This week, the state government announced tougher penalties for dog owners whose pets attack. They'll now face bans and massive fines. But the news has also prompted renewed debate about Victoria's restricted breed laws designed to cull potentially dangerous dogs. Animal welfare groups say those laws have had no impact on public safety and have merely resulted in the unnecessary killing of hundreds of good-natured family pets. One group has been so incensed by the laws it's fighting back through the courts. She just makes you laugh when you need it most and it's, it's like she knows that you need a hug or a cuddle and she comes and gives kisses and she loves your ears, she'll cuddle your ear and do the flea nipping and she's just, she's just the most <laughs> amazing dog. Like, Did dogs on trial save her life? They saved her life. They saved her life and my life. You're a good girl. No, we're not going in there. Samantha Miller is enjoying life once more, having spent a harrowing five months when Chichina was on dog's death row. Last October, Chichina escaped the yard through an open gate. Council officers identified the dog as a restricted breed and planned to put it down. She's never attacked anybody. She gets excited. She jumps, and I don't doubt she scares people, but Labradors will jump and scare you. Um, She's never actually tried to hurt anyone. But a group of volunteers calling themselves Dogs on Trial stepped in, launching a legal appeal to save Chichina. I didn't have the mental energy to do what needed to be done. I didn't have the mental strength left. Dogs on Trial successfully challenged the council determination that Chichina was a pit bull. What sort of dog is she, Samantha? Um, honestly, I don't know. I don't care. The restricted breed laws have been an attempt to reduce the number of dog attacks in Victoria, like the horrific death of Ian Chole in St Albans in 2011. The coroner's court was told the Pitbull Mastiff Cross that mauled Ian Chole had no history of aggression. Despite this, animal welfare groups have said from the outset restricted breed laws would fail. The statistics show that the Pitbull isn't the cause of menacing or dangerous dog attacks, the RSPCA did a survey and found that two out of the 110 dogs seized and brought into metropolitan shelters in 2010-11 were pit bulls, two out of 110. Chichina is one of 30 dogs dogs on trial have saved in just over a year. Why do you think so many people are fighting these laws? Because it's wrong, because it doesn't work. He was six months old there. Jade Appleby's dog, Cursor, has been locked up since December after it escaped through a backyard fence into a neighbour's property. He's been held because the council declared him as an American pit bull terrier. Is he? No. Jade Appleby now has another dog for company, while thousands of people support her social media campaign to be reunited with Cursor. She's going before the Supreme Court next month. Dogs on trial. They've been with me from the very beginning, so right back to my VCAT hearing. Um, they've been absolutely wonderful, like they've supported me throughout this whole process. A lot of owners that have been, you know, targeted with their dogs over this law, um, they've got no idea what they're in for and how to defend themselves. Carol Lee is part of Dogs on Trial, one of three people fighting to save dogs identified as restricted breeds. A lot of these people are being told that it's very informal in VCAT, which it isn't, because the councils are showing up with barristers, sometimes two barristers, and these owners have got no hope against anything like that, so we've been helping them funding their legal costs. We also can refer them to people that can assess their dog to become a witness for them. Hundreds of dogs have already been destroyed, with most owners either accepting or finding it too difficult to fight the council determination. It's a scandal. The councils are intransigent and inflexible. And the only way in which you get these dogs uh, ultimately justice is to go through the court system. And the cases are always fought robustly. Graham McEwen says the vast majority of owners who challenge their dogs' classification as restricted breed are winning in the courts. Councils are hopeless. The fact that 80% of the dogs go home suggests that the 
council officers are erring on the side of putting the dog in rather than properly assessing whether it is a restricted breed dog under perhaps some misguided notion of exposure to public liability if they, if they don't. The breed specific legislation I don't think has added anything to the community's safety. Nothing. That's not the way to go about making the community safe. There is no research either in Australia, there's no evidence from Australia or overseas that would tell us that the way to make the community safe from dangerous dogs is through breed specific legislation. There isn't any. Animal welfare groups are happier with new laws announced this week that target owners rather than dogs. Owners who have dogs that attack people or other animals can be banned from owning pets for 10 years and fined up to $34,000. We firmly believe that people have a right to feel safe in the streets. Uh, there are some dog owners who are not responsible with their dogs. This puts in place another step in the process where if they are not in controlling their dog appropriately, that dog actually attacks, they are convicted of that attack, uh, they can be banned from owning a dog in the future. But the RSPCA still sees the laws as window dressing. I think it's an attempt by the government to tell us that they're making us safer. I just don't think it's true. Dogs on trial want to see Victoria adopt the so-called Calgary model of increasing registration fees for certain breeds and increasing owner penalties for non-compliance with bylaws. In Calgary, the population has actually doubled since it's been in and the dog incidents of attacks have halved and they've got over a million more dogs and a lot of full breed dogs too because it's a safe place for them to go. It's a, you know, it's a more honest system. Instead, the government is proposing to make it tougher for dogs on trial in court. We will bring in legislation to reverse the onus of proof so that uh, instead of councils having to prove that it is a restricted breed, once it has been determined by council officers that it is a restricted breed, the onus will then be on the owner to prove that it isn't. It's just a sign that the government's trying to make it harder to somehow win cases. It's got a whiff of desperation about it. Before the onus of proof is changed, dogs on trial are determined to secure the release of Cursor.